guys, it's me, Shawl360, here with the review of episode 13 and 14 of Cheese in the Trap. Um, before I begin the review, I read about how the lead actor, I believe his name is Park Hajin, he is upset about the path that the show has taken. He expressed that he took on the project based on the webtoon and that the script and the plot has moved far away from where the webtoon went and he's upset about the way things have turned out. Now, I've told you guys from the very beginning I've never read the webtoon. I don't know anything about the webtoon other than the fact that it is called Cheese in the Trap. Uh, but that being said, I find the timing of him talking about this to be very suspect because here we are literally the end of the run and he's finally coming up and saying, oh yeah, I don't like the way things are going. You should have said that way back when you saw there was a problem. Because he claims that like the introduction of the part-time job is what messed everything up. And that was kind of when his screen time started to be diminished. So you have to wonder, is it an actor's vanity that's causing him to speak out now? Or did they really start to stray away from the original plot at the time that they assigned him with the part-time job? I don't really know. I can't say. But if you have read the webtoon and you see the difference, I would love to hear from you in the comments section because this is an area where I don't really have information or insight and I'm very curious about that. So I wanted to put that forward before we continue on with the rest of the episode. So in this episode, um, Bakino is kind of recovering from the whole fight with Yu Jung and he's having to recover from a lot because not only did he have to recover the fact that you know his face is looking all fucked up but it was further confirmation after watching Hong Sul comfort Yu Jung that he's not going to get her she's just not for him and then you know she kind of drives home that point even more when they're studying together for his I'm going to call it his GED because I don't know what they call it in Korea but anyway when they're studying for that and she leaves him to talk to Yu Jung and expresses how you know oh we just have friendship nothing else I don't have anything to do with him I'm all about you he's like yeah she's She'll never be mine. Along with this struggle, he has another struggle too. Um, before he came to Seoul, at the very beginning of the show, you might recall that he had a friend who was like, the boss is looking for you. Turns out that Bacon before he arrived in Seoul, was a part-time street thug slash gangster. And apparently he's been accused of stealing some money from the gangsters and the gangsters are looking for him. And they want $10 million one which I think according to Google translates to about eight thousand dollars and they want it in one week um, and Bacon is going through it because when he goes home to try to look for this money because he's ready to pay these guys off and be free um, his money is gone he had an emergency fund that he was saving he had it hidden inside Hong Sul's piano books which that was a really stupid place to put that money but anyway the money's gone Bacon has spent it um, he doesn't have much money in the bank and so he spends the entire episode trying to find this money and deal with his financial issues, deal with kind of his interpersonal problems, the whole Hong Sul being uncomfortable around him thing. All this stuff is going on with Bake, you know, and so he's just, he's a mess. He is a mess. And I'm going to get into um, more of his mess a little bit later, but I want to go back to Hong Sul. So Hong Su at the beginning of this episode, outside of the whole baking out thing, she's wondering if she should go ahead and sit for her uh, graduation exam. So apparently in Korea, you have an exam that you can take starting your junior year, I guess, of college to graduate from your major. So you take this graduation exam and after that, the rest that you're taking is just classes to try to bring up your grades or whatever else. And Hong Sul wants to sit for this exam, but she's not sure. Well, she has a date scheduled with Yu Jung, and when she goes on the stage, she happens to mention that she's thinking about taking this exam, and he offers her some notes. Well, she gets the notes from him, and after she gets the notes, the kids at school are kind of like, hey, buddy, you know, you got these impressive notes. Why don't you go ahead and share with the group? And because she doesn't want to share them, because... Yu Jung tells her, those are notes I meant for you to have, I don't want you to share them. She gets a little bit of animosity from people, namely uh, Song Chul and Da Hyung. Song Chul is upset at her because he feels like she doesn't want to help him and she should want to help him and that she did him wrong by excluding him from the group project where he did no work. Uh, and that she did him wrong because she blamed him for stealing the money that he took from the group when they had the big outing at the very beginning of the, the series. So yeah, 
he's he's kind of upset at her. Da Young, of course, is trying to like cozy up to her and be buddy buddy, but then she overhears them saying, you know, nobody likes Hung Soo and she thinks she's all that because she's dating Yu Jung. So, you know, she's dealing with those problems at work as well. Um, before she went on her date with Yu Jung, and I just want to put this out there because I found this very interesting. Before she went on her date with Yu Jung, she was confronted by Baek Yina, who was kind of like, you know, you think that you're all that, but you're just a passing fad, and eventually Yu Jung's going to be through with you, so you need to find out whether or not you're tough enough to hang with him. And Baek Yina goes to try to hit her, and before she can hit her, Hong Sul's nose starts spontaneously bleeding. And I bring this up because there's another incident where Hong Sul isn't touched, but she's injured anyway. And I found this to be a weird contrast from the beginning of the season when she was like really being injured, but I mean, maybe her injuries weren't that severe. Because um, if you recall, at the beginning of the series, she got cut by the homeless guy. Um, she got attacked by the panty stalker and thrown down the stairs. But now, like even the threat of a fight it like makes her go into a meet immediate kind of like overreaction because like literally out of nowhere her nose starts bleeding um same thing um Hong Song Chul later on threatens her and he raises his fist and she falls to the ground of her own volition scrapes her hands all up so I, I thought that was weird that she's now being injured by imagined threats I'll get back to that later, hopefully. There's a lot of stuff I keep saying I'm going to get back to later. I hope that I will. I hope I'll remember. You guys know I'm scattershot when it comes to these reviews. So anyway, Hong Sil's dealing with that whole issue with, you know, the pressure to give the notes to her friends, whether or not she can be close with Bacon O, and, you know, trying to maintain her relationship with Yu Jung. And that was one of the things I really liked about their date. When they were having their date, they started to have kind of a little bit of a play fight during the date and Yu Jung was really forthcoming about his emotions during the date and she tells him I love it when we fight we should do this all the time and she's right I love the fact that they were fighting they were having like real relationship things going on it wasn't just all perfect nobody was holding anything back and they were interacting like how a real couple would react and that's what I needed to see from them so I was happy about that so let's go back to baking ho so Bae ho discovers that his sister is the one who took his emergency money. She spent all the money. He tries to go to a bank to get a loan, but because he doesn't work for a big company and he's not opening his own business, he can't get the money. Um, last ditch effort. He goes to Yoo Jung's father to ask for the money. He goes to Yoo Jung's father. Yoo Jung's father immediately like starts to tell him off. He's like you know what, I'm tired of your feud with my son and I've taken care of you and your sister and I'm tired of you guys, you know, eating off us and everything else. And in order for you to understand how heartbreaking that scene is, you have to go back to last week's review and about the way that back in high school, Yu Jung's father offered to adopt the Bake siblings. So to go from a man who offers to make you a part of his family and then for him to be like, I've done enough for you. I'm tired of taking care of you like you're not family. That's really difficult. And Baking Ho comes to a realization that maybe is the same realization that Yu Jung came up with several years ago. You don't really want to adopt me or you didn't really want to adopt me because you loved me. You just wanted me and my sister to be caretakers for your son. I, I never really mattered like that to you. And it's heartbreaking because he's a guy who doesn't really belong to anybody. I mean, his one blood relative that we see, they're not close. And she doesn't really care for him. Um, he offers to take her with him the next time he runs away. And I don't know if it's because she's still hurt from the last time he ran away or if it's just because, you know, she's a bitch. But she kind of scoffs at him like, why would I ever run away with you? And... You know, he doesn't have his sister. He doesn't have Yu Jung's father anymore, which I guess he thought would be an ally. He doesn't have other resources to cling to to get this money. Hong Sul, even though he's close with her, she is involved with Yu Jung. That's her guy. So that's not, she, he doesn't belong to her either. And he would love to because her family's very embracing of him. But, you know, he's just a man that belongs to no one except for these streets. The gangsters want him. That's really all. Um, so anyway, after he asks Yu Jung's father about the money, Yu Jung's father goes back and tells Yu Jung about the request. 
and Yoo Jung approaches Baekhyun and was like, I'll give you the money. Just leave my girlfriend alone. And, you know, Baekhyun is just like, mm -hmm. this, this, this is exactly what I expected to happen. I expected you to come to me to find a way to exploit my weakness once again. You know, to be stone cold once again. And it speaks two things, this situation. Number one, it speaks to Bakino's character that he doesn't take the money right off or even really acknowledge the offer. But it also speaks to Yoo Jung's character that he's so insecure with his relationship with Hong Sul that he's willing to pay off guys to disappear. Like, that's not cool to me. I, if, I was, if I was his girlfriend and I found that out, that would be grounds for me wanting to leave because I'm not property. You can't pay people to leave me alone. I'm not a commodity, but uh, that's neither here nor there. But after Baking Ho kind of feeling like he doesn't belong to anybody, feeling like there's nobody really there for him in his time of need, time of need feeling like a man alone, and his piano teacher talking about you're pitiful, like that didn't help anything. Um, Hong Sul catches up with him after she's kind of realized that, you know, he's upset. And she tells him, listen, I notice you're upset. Do you need money? Me and my family will be here for you. Now, he doesn't take the money, but he hugs her. And after all of the turmoil he's had, just trying to think, how am I going to solve this problem? Not even the promise of the money is necessarily what makes him so emotional. It's the fact that somebody wants to be there for him. When all the places that he thought people would be there for him, they don't exist anymore. And I think that's what makes Baking Ho's character such a sympathetic character is because I think we all can see just how let down he's been. And he really got to his lowest point, I think, in this set of episodes. I was really grateful for that moment. I actually cried. <laughs> I cried tears, real tears. So yeah, that was a good thing to see. But in the end, it turns out that he's kind of figured out a way to get himself out of this whole gangster thing. Or at least we think he's figured out a way because it's all it's all very circumstantial. So he thinks what he can do is he can sell his apartment, get the 700, 7 million won from that. And then he's got this piano concert competition coming up that if he wins first prize he can get three million from that that'll be ten million dollars so he just asked the gangster can you please give me a month i am a piano prodigy he tries he proves it to him through google search i can do this just give me a month but apparently the gangster plans to not only get this money but also drag bacon o back into the life so i mean we'll see how that goes but i thought it was cool that the gangster's little sidekick who was also bacon o's friend gave him some money so even after it's all said and done, he does have people in his corner because he's a lovable guy. So Bakino's practicing for this piano competition, but he's starting to notice his hand is injured. We don't ever see him go to the hospital to get his hand checked out. Lord, I hope his hand is okay. We only got two episodes left. I just need him to get this money. Please let him get this money. But yeah, um, Bakino, things start to look up once we get to episode 14. Even the whole thing with Hong Sul. He goes to Hong Sul and explains to her, you know, I do have these feelings for you, but I'm going to resolve them in a month. And when he says he's going to resolve them in a month, what he basically means is I'm going to be out of here in a month anyway, so don't worry about it. Because he plans to get this gangster paid off and then disappear, which I, I totally see why you do that. That that would be my plan as well. Um, so let's go back to Hong Sul. Uh, Hong Sul finds out about how people don't really like her and so she's like I'm not gonna give the notes to anybody well she's in class talking with Bora and they leave class to do something her notes are on her desk when she comes back the notes disappear initially we see Da Young eyeing Hong Sul's stuff before she leaves and when she comes back the notes are gone so the first thing you think is oh yeah Da Young did this and then when Da Young is looking kind of you know I, I didn't do it I saw Song Chul hanging out you tend to not believe her because she's been such a bitch so far. Um, and then when they confront Song Chul, of course, he says he doesn't have it. You know, whatever. So, but it seems like maybe Da Young was lying and she's the one who stole it. But it turns out she was telling the truth. Song Chul stole the notes. He stole the notes for the fourth year exam and he passed the exam. And then he's drunk the night that he passes with the top scores in the class. 
And while he's drinking, he pulls Da Young aside and pulls out the notes that he stole. So Hang Suo confronts him about it. Like, those weren't yours. Those were mine. You shouldn't have stolen them. And he's like, I wouldn't have had to steal them if you had given them to me. And you're the one who's doing me wrong because you keep catching me in my faults. And long story short, she's about to get her ass whooped. But Bacon Ho shows up in the nick of time. Well... Of course, Yoo Jung gets to hear about this. And Yoo Jung, if he's willing to pay off a guy to just not hang out with his girlfriend anymore, if you actually do something to his girlfriend, there's going to be hell to pay. So he comes up with a trap for Song Chul. And while I'm all for people getting their comeuppance, I thought that this trap was cruel. Song Chul passes the exam and he gets an interview for a permanent position at a company. I think it's the Sunju Company. But... He had applied at Taerong, which is where Yoo Jung's family owns everything. Somehow or another, Yoo Jung manipulates it to get Song Chul an interview with Taerong on the same day as the Sunju interview. And because he's so conning and clever, he's able to trick Song Chul into kind of believing, hey guy, I'm an intern there, I got the inside scoop, I can help you out. So Song Chul abandons the interview for Sun Ju to go to the Taerang interview, and because Yu Jung was his coach, because you know Song Chul's not studying nothing, he's coached into studying in a completely wrong way, gets completely bad notes, totally bombs the interview, gets drunk, and Hong Sul sees him. Now, Hong Sul knew about the interview. She knew about the interview after he stole it. She knew that Yu Jung. She knew that Yu Jung knew that Song Chul had an interview on the same day as the Soon Ju interview. Song Chul gets drunk after bombing the interview, brings Hong Sul into the restaurant. Jay Wu and Baekina show up. How coincidental is that? And Baekina listens to everything and she realizes Yu Jung has set this boy up. Not only that, but Hong Sul knows that Yu Jung has set this boy up. And she tells it. She tells it all. She does not hold her tongue. She's like, I know you set him up. I know exactly what happened. And Hong Sul, you knew he did it. You knew it was coming. And uh, Sang Chul is like, I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill Yu Jung. I'm going to literally kill him. Shows up at Taerang the next day and is ready to kill him. Not only does he threaten to kill him in front of everybody, but he also outs Yu Jung because nobody knew that Yu Jung was the CEO's son. So after doing that, Hong Sul shows up at Yu Jung's office because she, I guess she wanted to talk to him about the Song Chul thing. And when she shows up, she sees Yu Jung threatening Song Chul with everything. And I mean, he is cold blooded. Like, I was actually surprised when he appeared because the security guards had thrown Song Chul out. Here comes Yu Jung like a thief in the fucking night. You didn't see him coming. It's all of a sudden, whoom, they're in a corner in Tuslin. And Hong Sul sees this. And instead of being like, you're creepy as fuck. I can't believe I stood by and let you do something like this. I'm out of here. Instead, she holds him and says, I understand you. You don't have to say anything. I get why you did it. And I want you to know, I won't ever run away. I won't ever run away. My gosh. Girl. Okay. Looking back at the story, the man that you love from what we can assume, tried to set you up with a guy who turned out to be a stalker. Um, he ended up losing this other guy who wasn't a great guy, but he ended up losing this guy an opportunity on a job when he really needs it. Um, he may have caused the end of the piano dreams of a guy who you're friends with. You've seen him manipulate people in offices using their personal information against them, the little teacher's assistant. He is like a mastermind when it comes to manipulating people. And you've seen him do it. You've seen him, you've seen him do it. And you're like, I won't ever run away. Now, it'd be one thing if she had seen him threaten Song Chul and she just turned right around like, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get out of this. Cause that would've been me. I wouldn't have even went up to him. I'd have turned around and tried to process the information. But no, instead, you are just reassuring him that, yeah, you know, 
even though you did some shady shit, I'm here for you, baby. Don't worry about it. Don't don't feel like you can't come to me. I'm still here for you. I just can't. I just can't. And I told you I would talk about um, Hong Su's injuries and how she keeps getting injured with implied threats. Like, it doesn't actually happen, or at least not to the, the scope that she expected to happen, but... You know, when she thought Song Chu was going to hit her, she fell to the ground and skinned up her hands. When she thought that Bacon Isle was going to hit her, all of a sudden her nose starts bleeding out of nowhere. And I think that one thing that her uncle said to her when she was talking about kind of her relationship issues with Yu Jung, he said, that's the thing about relationships. The more you fuss and fight, the more you become like each other. And that's what makes a relationship grow. I think Hong Su is becoming like Yu Jung in the fact that when it comes to these threats, these perceived threats, she makes them maybe worse than they are or more severe than they are. And I think that there was a time before she met Yu Jung when if she had seen him doing something like this, she would have said, wow, I need to leave that guy alone. In fact, she was like that before they started dating. If you recall, when she thought that he had dumped the beer on um, the girl that was sitting next to him, she was like, I don't trust that guy. Look at him. He smiles in everybody's face, but he's really scheming in the background. Now she's embracing it. And to me, I just, I kind of thought that Hong Su had a little bit more fiber than that. And I, I just want to know from anybody who knows about Korean culture, is this typical behavior? Like, do women typically respond to stuff like this? Is this something that, like, you could legit see happening in real life? Because I just, I... I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. I need somebody to explain it to me because I, I just don't get it. But rather than ending on me being totally disappointed by Hong Sul and her character motivations, I want to talk about my favorite part of these two episodes, Botake! Oh, I'm so happy that Botake is real! So, Bora um, has been noticing that Untake hasn't really been around much lately. She wasn't sure what he was doing. And then she finds out he's modeling and that his boss is a really pretty former model and he's buying gifts. And, you know, she's feeling a little jealous. And Hong Su's like, well, girl, if you're feeling jealous, why don't you just go out with him? Like, just make this thing real. And she says, I don't want to because I don't want to ever break up with him. I like our friendship the way it is now. And if I date him and we break up, I don't know if I can handle that because I want him to always be in my life which honey I totally get where you're coming from but at the same time you know he's right when she finally confronts Untake about it it's on her birthday Untake hadn't really been around and she kind of has not been talking to him either and they have a little bit of a misunderstanding she goes to the the beef place by herself he thinks that she was supposed to, he was supposed to meet her at her house and then go to the beef place they meet outside in the streets in the snow. It's really cute and beautiful. And he gives her some earrings that she thought he was buying for another woman. And he tells her, listen, if you're not going to date me, like I want to date you, you know I want to date you, you know I like you. If you're not going to date me, you have to expect that eventually I'm going to be with another woman. Just like I have to accept the reality that if you're not going to date me, eventually I'm going to see you with another man. And of course she tells him, you know, this is the reason why I don't want to date you because I don't want to ever have us not be together. And he tells her, listen, I promise if you date me, I won't ever get sick. I won't even die without your permission. Just, just date me. And I just like, oh, these two, y'all, y'all are the real OTP. Botake for life. Baked botakos. I just, I really love them. I just think they're the best. I think they're the best. But, yeah, I wanted to end on a positive note because when it comes to Hong Sul, one of the things that Bacon and I said to her, which I guess sums it all up, is like, you know, did you really know nothing or did you pretend not to know anything when it came to the setup of Song Chul? And it's all about agency. It is all about agency. And that, to me, has been a running theme throughout a lot of these characters' interactions. Um... There's a lot of blaming and there's a lot of assigning people roles as victims and victimizers. And Song Chul was one of those ones that he never really took agency for the problems in his life. Hong Sul felt like she had no agency that people were running her. Yu Jung creates agency on, in matters, so it really probably is even none of his business. 
And Bacon Ho is somebody who legitimately really doesn't have any agency, but continues to try to create it for himself. And I feel like if nothing else from this whole series, because the series is not over, but one of the overwhelming things that I've I've noticed in this series besides like a lot of the psychological explorations is you know at some point in the trap you have to determine are you the mouse or are you the one that's setting the trap and if you are the mouse do you have to go for the cheese because that's the thing with the song chul trap he didn't have to go to the interview at Tehrang. He could have said, you know what, I know I'm vastly underqualified for this position. Even if I have somebody helping me, once I get on this job, they'll know I'm underqualified and I'll probably end up losing this job anyway. So I don't have to go to this interview. And he could have totally foiled you, Jung, just by saying, you know what, thank you for helping me out, but I'm actually going to go over to this Sunju interview. I'm going to make that happen. Could have done that, but he didn't. Same thing with Hong Sul. I've said multiple times things she could have done, but she didn't. But definitely, it is about, you know, what role do you have in the trap and do you have to take the cheese? Anyway, that was my review of episode 13 and 14. I know this was a really long, rambling, kind of pointless review, but I hope that you enjoyed it because I'm not going to be retaping this. And I promise you this weekend we will do the reviews for episodes 15 and 16. But before we get there, be thinking about what our next drama is going to be because there's a lot of dramas out there to watch. Onu from Shiny, which is my bias group, um, is in a drama called Descendants of the Sun. I wouldn't mind watching that. Um, Rain, who is my ultimate bias in all of K-pop, has got a drama called Comeback Mister. I wouldn't mind watching that. Um, Bacon, IU, and a bunch of other people have a drama coming up. I don't remember the name of it, but that's probably going to be a good one to watch. I'm sure everybody's going to be watching it. And then I know that Minho and V from BTS Either they have a drama or a movie coming out. I can't recall exactly. But these are all options along with other stuff that's coming out at the same time. So if you have any ideas of what our next thing should be, let me know. Because like I said, we got one more week and then we're out of here. So yeah, there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even finish this series. But we've made it this far. Can't give up now. I have to take some agency in this situation. All right, then. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.